Hey, Jason here from Bohemia Bees. We're uh, working on a colony. This was the uh, Dryers Creek Church colony. So this is a wonderfully building colony coming out of winter. Uh, we just located our queen and we've moved the box from a nucleus colony, five frame nucleus colony. We had two mediums on top, just keeping the continue to give enough room. But you can see there's a lot of bees just in the, the boxes. So we're gonna make sure that we protect from these uh, bees swarming. You know, one of the things you do in the spring is to make sure that you manage your colonies for swarming so they don't, uh, you know, depart on you. Uh, good, solid, strong colony, good laying queen, you don't want to lose them. So uh, if it gets a little tight or congested inside there, they will uh, tend to, uh, um, you know, swarm out on you. One cool little thing that's happening here, if you look right here, I just moved the queen down on the bottom. And if you watch what they're doing, this is called fanning. And that is what they do to let the other bees over here in the colony know the queen's in here, come over here. So they're emitting a pheromone that says the queen's in here, come in here. So that's a neat little thing to see. But one of the other things you wanna do is you wanna inspect your frames. As I move these frames from this box over here to this box, one of the things I'm looking for are queen cups, queen cells, so here's an example of a frame. And if you notice on the bottom, we've got one cup, another cup right there. And you look inside that cup, I don't know if you can see it or not. There's no eggs or larvae in them, but they're practicing. They're getting ready to say, if we need to create a new queen, if our queen swarms out, because she can't spread her pheromones through this whole colony, then we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna cut those off. Uh, let's take a look. If you take the frame, when you set your frame to the side, you know, gently so you don't crush bees. And what you want to do is work quickly and cutting off those cups. So my cup's right there and we're going to remove that cup. So just take a little quick swipe of the knife and cut off the cup. They're going to rebuild the cup because that's what they do. There's another one. Well, that's a piece. There's Burcone. And then there's another little cup right there. And we're just scraping off the cups is all we're doing. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people mistake these right here as queen cells. Those are drone cells. Those are unfertilized eggs that are presented by the queen to help pass along her genetics. Mm -hmm. These bubble looking ones are capped drone cells. The flat looking brood right here, that will be regular brood or worker brood. Up here, we've got some capped honey and we've got some pollen right next to it. There's a band of pollen right between the brood uh, and the actual um, honey and, and pollen. So it's usually toward the top of the frame. So let me go ahead and ch check the other side of this frame and then we'll slot it in. Okay, so this side looks pretty good. Doesn't look like there's any cups on that. So I'm gonna put that back in the same nesting position in the top. Check my next frame as well as I move them over. It's what you... Good colony management is the key to making sure. This is a good solid resource frame. You see capped honey over here, some nectar, lots of pollen stores. Not much brood. Maybe there's a couple eggs down towards the bottom. There's probably some brood on this end that's hatched out. So we're gonna go ahead and check for queen cells and put this one in as well. I'll check back in at the end. Okay, so we've gotten our second super put on here. And the reason why we added a super is because there were so many bees in here and we're currently in a nectar flow. So I've got my queen excluder on in the bottom here and uh, I've got two honey supers on top. Now, there were about 10 frames of brood, about eight of them or six of them had brood in them or 10 frames, 10 medium frames with, uh, with brood uh, in about six of them or so. And I took those and I put them above the queen excluder, right? So eventually what's gonna happen is that they're gonna take and hatch out and they'll stay working and they'll move migrate down to the um, to the bottom into the brood nest. The queen's now down the bottom and above it are all mediums. And I've spaced them so that there are nine frames up top, 10 on the bottom, nine on the top. But the reason I do that is so I also, is so that they can build out the comb appropriately for honey, make it a, a thicker, wider frame. So when I cut the cappings off, the, uh, the honey extracts easier. It's a heavier amount of frame. It's a heavier frame usually, but uh, heavier, a larger amount of honey that's on the frame. 
I've also checkerboarded the frames within these boxes. Checkerboarding is basically taking an old frame, new frame, old frame, new frame. And that just allows as the bees emerge out, they work the frames evenly throughout the box, uh, trying to allow them to spread their energies and not getting clumped up on one or two frames. So that's what we did here. Again, this was just a way we took uh, a smaller nucleus colony that was five frames with two mediums on top. Um, and we expanded them to give them some more room to prevent swarming and also so they can begin their, their nectar collection and, and making honey. So uh, any questions, comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. As we continue to do cool things here at the Bohemian Apiary, where, where beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby. Mm -hmm. It's an obsession.